drones, mindless human destroying machines, or helping humans solve problems with logistics. That and more today on FredX Investigates. When it comes to drones, you have to understand the application for the drone and how it's going to be used. Uh, it could be used for multiple purposes. And we're definitely going to go ahead and deep dive into a little bit uh, more about drones. Now, before we try to understand uh, what they do and if they are good for our modern society, we have to ask ourselves, what exactly is a drone? So let's go ahead and do some research on that. So according to Wikipedia, a drone is just another term for a UAV. You've probably heard that in video games. Call of Duty. Captain Price yells out, enemy UAV above your head. Something like that, right? Now what Captain Price means by that and what other video games uh, put into their games. Uh, in that instance, it's used in a military setting to where it reveals the players on a mini map, right? It tells you where they are and it allows you to go run up to them and clack, 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 kill them. But um, there's many uses for UAV, AKA drone. Although primarily we've used them as a society uh, as far back as World War I for military purposes. Now, an unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, or uncrewed aerial vehicle, commonly known as a drone, is an aircraft without a human pilot on board. UAVs are a component of an unmanned aircraft system, UAS, which include a UAV a ground-based controller and a system of communications between the two. The flight of UAVs may operate with various degrees of autonomy, either under remote control by a human operator or in autonomously onboard computers, referred to as an autopilot. Same thing that they have in your car, right? Compared to crewed aircraft, UAVs were originally used for missions too dull dirty or dangerous for humans. While drones originated mostly in military applications, their use is rapidly finding many more applications, including aerial photography, product deliveries, agriculture, policing and surveillance, infrastructure, inspections, science, smuggling, and drone racing. That's incredible. I have never heard anything about a drone race. We might actually show some footage of that as well. but. All that being said, um, let's get into some more information. In World War I, they had drones. As a matter of fact, in 1915, Nikola Tesla wrote about unmanned aerial combat vehicles. The first attempt at a self-propelled drone as an aerial target was completed in 1916 by A.M. Lowe. It wasn't until World War I that the first pilotless torpedo was invented by the Dayton Wright Airplane Company. After World War I, companies worked to push drone technology forward with inventions like the Hewitt Sperry Automatic Airplane and the Kettering Bug, an unmanned aerial torpedo. Most efforts during this time were completed by the military up until 1935, when actor and model plane enthusiast Reginald Denny became the first civilian to develop a remotely piloted vehicle. Very interesting. I got a anonymous call from a concerned citizen. Uh, apparently he knew me, I didn't know him, but let's go ahead and take a listen in to see what he had to say. Hey, 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 hey Freddy. Uh, I, I got kidnapped by one of them, one of them drones. I, I knew them drones was up to no good. They've been, they've been doing weird stuff to my butt. Yeah, help me, Freddie. Help me. Uh, now, today, drones are used, as you can see in this video, for modern military purposes uh, almost daily. You, you don't hear about this kind of stuff because obviously there's, there, obviously there's too many wars to cover throughout the world. Every drone strike, you can't cover every drone strike. But as you can see, they're very effective in eliminating targets. They have no idea that they're above them. They can barely hear them over the gunfire, uh, the sounds of war, etc., etc. As you can see, they're just taking soldiers out left and right. Um, 
Now, one may ask, um, since drones were invented way back then, how do we get this uh, scary visual of drones taking over the machines, taking over, uh, murdering unarmed civilians like ourselves? You get that vi that image and that picture inside of your head because of videos like this that we're watching. It's very easy for the uh, military to program an autonomous flight of a drone to a selected target and take the target out almost instantaneously with the push of a button. It's like playing, it's like you're playing Call of Duty in literal real life. This is how it looks. You got a crosshair. You got targets moving. Your mission is to eliminate the targets now. One could say, oh, machines have flaws, they have problems. You program it to kill only certain types of people uh, in the battlefield. What happens if it kills its own uh, program writer, right? It's very possible. Machines break, they mess up all the time, there's malfunctions in them. So you got to think to yourself, are these machines really going to help us moving forward in the future? Now, at my job, we recently had a test flight of a military type drone that can carry a payload of, I believe, up to 100 pounds and fly for 20 miles. Now, the whole goal of this test flight was to see if it would be possible to deliver goods to the community that, that it was flying into, which was where I work. So theoretically, what they're trying to accomplish is an autonomous route that would be able to drop off a whole block's uh, orders from Amazon, right? A whole, a whole entire block. Because you have to think to yourself, this payload is only 100 pounds. You're carrying light items, maybe some water. P food is pushing it, but I don't know. Um, we're getting to the point where they're testing these things in our own communities. Now, I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts on this, what you guys think about it. Uh, do you think we're going to get taken over by drones in the future? Do you think machines are going to replace our human jobs that we're doing now? I say yes. Hopefully, my job won't get replaced very fast like other jobs, um, like how they're putting machines into McDonald's to walk up and just punch in an order. I think that that's good. I think it's good to streamlining things, but um, there's always a dark side to things. There's always um, downsizing, cutting back, saving money for the greedy players at the top. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and roll this footage of the drone from my work. I caught some pretty decent footage, so hopefully you guys like it. Give me your comments in the comments section below. Let's watch. Are the other ones just a video, John? Yeah. 8K or 4K? <laughs> I'm no idea. No idea. No idea about that. <laughs> Josh Duggett, 
I'm the flight test engineer who runs the flight test program for this aircraft. Uh, this is the Bell App 70, uh, designed to carry a 70 pound payload in the pod. Uh, so the pod is designed to be modular. You can customize that to whatever your mission wanted to do. Uh, so with this one, it's basically got an empty pod in the middle of it that you can mount uh, equipment in, or water, food, medical equipment, anything you like. Uh, we also have customized pods for military, for doing different types of missions, or for medical transport. Uh, so that the airframe can basically carry whatever a customer would like to do. Uh, all electric, fully autonomous. So the flight today, we took off from near Texas Motor Speedway, uh, flew about four and a half miles here, uh, fully autonomous landing. Um, so you saw it'll come in, establish a hover, come in to correct itself, capture its point from whatever the wind drift was and then come down and land in place. So everything GPS targeted, uh, fully autonomous. Once we arm the aircraft and let it go, we give it a point A to point B flight, uh, and then it completes that on all its own. So fully electric, uh, there's batteries uh, within each of the vertical nacelles uh, that are powering the aircraft. Um, uh, so this aircraft will cruise about 70 miles an hour for ground speed. So the landing that you saw, the takeoff would have been just the opposite. It'll take off. Uh, right now we have, we can program how high we want it to go in the hover. Uh, right now we had it take off to 100 feet just to make sure we clear all the trees and everything around it uh, down at the launch site. And then it'll tip over and do the exact opposite of what you saw here. Uh, curve it over to forward flight. Uh, so this is the upper wing. Uh, then flies in forward flight so you get the range and speed benefits of a airplane and the no landing zone no runway required benefits of a quadcopter for a vertical takeoff so uh, this aircraft we can go for different applications i don't need a big we can run uh, area to land we can land in a 20 foot square area uh, easily like we just did just now uh, so you can land it potentially on a rooftop at a hospital uh, for the military you could go land it at a Unimproved area, you just need a clearing in the trees uh, up close to where the troops are stationed without having a lot of infrastructure that's needed to support it. How uh, long is flight time on uh, a single so charge? We have flown this out to 20 miles oh, well. of range well. uh, with the full payload. Well. So it's still in development and testing, so we're uh, still doing some optimization on that. The goal on this aircraft is to get 30 mile range. Beautiful. So in this one, you get so how many batteries if you wanted. So if the customer was really interested in more range uh, and less payload, they could sacrifice some payload for more batteries. Uh, but a trade-off there, and you can fly how much weight you can fly. You can easily change up the batteries in the field so you don't have to worry about charging it. Hey, firm. So uh, once he's done pulling the logs, uh, so it's just two quarter turns. So there's no. Uh, intended to be kind of no custom equipment required to do it, so it's a flathead screwdriver. Mm -hmm. uh, open that up, unplug the batteries, and pull them out. Simple. The citizens are concerned. They are overwhelmed with feelings towards these drones, these unmanned aerial vehicles. Matter of fact, I'm getting another call right now. My phone line is just blowing up, and I really I don't understand where this is coming from. But let's go ahead and take a listen to this concerned citizen number two. I'm assuming he is also anonymous, but uh, we'll soon find out. Let's listen in. I want to call in to, uh, como se dice, report, report, uh, the little planes, the little stupid flying planes, the, um, the, the adorns, they fly around, they take pictures, <clears throat> the drones, the stupid drones, my bad, I was getting all them, and, uh, flying around and they make a lot of noise because I know they all got them up in the sky, the government to kill people and blow them up. I saw that movie. It's 
Ethan Hawke 2017. And uh, I don't like that. We need more um, regulars to keep them down because it's, it's too out of control. The the Everybody out here got them. And it's like, I'm fool, you got it off of like, like uh, Craigslist or I don't know, Alibaba's. Alibaba's got them on the cheaps. And uh, people be buying them for like 40 bucks. But uh, I'm not down with that. So calling to my, my local congressman and, uh, <laughs> and congresswoman. And I want to report them, all the drones. Thank you. So there you have it, guys. That was all the information that I tried to gather from uh, the internet really quickly about drones. And I don't know. I would like to hear what you guys think in the comments below. What do you guys have thoughts about as far as these drones go? Do you think they're going to be a detriment to the human society as we go on into the future? Because we definitely are in the future in 2021. And uh, back in the 1950s, they thought this world was going to be completely different. But it is uh, changing in the direction of space exploration and things of that nature. I am going to go ahead and actually look into purchasing one of these drones on Amazon. As you can see, the prices aren't that rambunctious. Uh because like i said drones have been around for quite some time now in the recreational space you can use them to film videos which obviously i'm going to try to do uh i'm pretty sure i'm going to get um a 1080p drone and i do have an idea of which one i'm going to get i definitely will do a oh it's this one right here I am definitely going to do a review video of this drone and see how the footage came out and I will let you guys know. But uh, thank you guys for watching the video. Go ahead and drop a comment, uh, like and subscribe. Go ahead and give me your thoughts. I want to hear what you guys think. I'd like to know if you guys would like to see more of these videos, uh, Fred X investigates. If you would like to see more of these, definitely go ahead and make that known in the comments. Go ahead and hit that bell notification so you can get notified when I drop the next video and I am out. I'm gonna go eat my Pizza Hut Detroit style pizza. That is a 10 out of 10, go and grab it right now. Until the next video, this is your boy Fred X. It's been great, it's been a pleasure. I am out, peace.